that is a bad dog. New York Giants fan reaction to Browns victory. Neighbors is a stud. Defense shows out. Finally, let's check it out. <laughs> This video is being brought to you by the good people at BetUS. Do you like free money? You want to take advantage of a great promotion? Well, BetUS has a great deal for you. Go to BetUS and enter the promo code YouTube150 to get a 150% match deposit bonus on your first deposit and a 125% match deposit bonus on your second and third deposits, all the way up to $2,000 in bonus cash. Great customer service at 24-7, 365 days a year. Fastest payouts in the business within 24 hours and 10% gambling insurance against all your net losses as long as you stay active every six months. Terms and conditions apply, and when you gamble, please do so responsibly. Never bet more than you can afford to lose. Tomorrow night for the victory stream, we get to crack this baby. Well, it's been open. We get to have a glass of scotch. It has been a long time since we have had a victory scotch. What up, Giants fans? Hit the thumbs up, subscribe, ring the bell. today. Can I get this back on the box? Today, a little bit of excitement for the New York Giants. We actually win a game. We actually freaking win a game. Can't believe it. We actually yep, came me out too. of there with a W. Uh, it could not have gotten off to a worse start for the Giants. And immediately, you're just thinking, here we go again. Season's lost. We suck. Eric Gray, for whatever reason, takes the ball out of the end zone. I hate that. Fumbles. Next play, Cleveland throws a touchdown, and here we go again. From that point on, the New York Giants completely dominated the first half. Of course, Daniel Jones had a really bad throw. Daniel Jones had a terrible throw, was intercepted. He got bailed out with a, you know, uh, roughing the passer penalty. And then he balled out. Jones was incredible in that first half of football. 17 and 19, 178, two touchdowns. Was on target with most everything. He had a lot of zip on the football. Played really well. Was very elusive in the pocket. Didn't take a lot of hits. Did really good. He did a very good job. Uh, Big shout out to Brian Dable. The first couple of weeks, I had a lot of questions about Brian Dable. What is he doing? What are this play calling? Um, didn't give up on Dable, but was definitely questioning a lot more than I usually would today. I felt like Brian Dable really had a very good mix of running and passing. I really liked the play calling today. Uh, the first half was incredible. The second half, uh, not so much. We'll get into that in a second. Malik Neighbors is him. Uh, my God. Do the Giants have a guy there or what, man? Malik Neighbors, unbelievable. A couple of awesome catches, two touchdowns. Youngest receiver in the history of football to have two touchdowns receiving in the game. He's 21 years and like 56 days. Finally, some good, some good history on our side. Yes, sir. But if you're not excited about Malik Neighbors and you're a Giants fan, I don't know what's going to get you excited about this team, man. He looks unbelievable. For real. Without he looks question. so really good, good Malik, Malik. Neighbors, man. He is, he is special. Uh, without question, we got he's one. a dog. We finally, got a playmaker in the wide receiving game, and uh, Malik Neighbors is him. The defense was awesome uh, today, absolutely awesome. Constant pressure on the Sean Watson, Brian Burns with a huge uh, strap, uh, sorry, sack strip, and uh, caused the fumble. Giants actually took that fumble and went in and scored seven before the half. That's something that we have not seen the Giants do in a long time, where they actually capitalize with a touchdown after a turnover. Burns is great. Lawrence is great. Thibodeau had pressure today. McFadden was awesome. Um, this defense played really well. That's kind of what we expected to see. And Shane Bowen seems like he's blitzing a lot more than he's known to do. And Cleveland really had a hard time with the blitz, as did Washington last week, which kind of wondered why the hell we went away from blitzing last week. Of course, in the second half, Singletary's got to shore this up. Singletary's been a very good running back for us. I feel like he's done a good job, but he fumbled last week as we were driving against Washington. Really hurt us. And then this week, same thing. We get the ball. We, you know, Cleveland has to punt. We get the ball back. Singletary has a good run. He fumbles. Cleveland gets the ball. It's kind of like all the momentum changed at that point. Singletary's got to hold on to the football. Now, at the end of the game, a very unselfish play by Devin Singletary. Just slide down to the one-yard line instead of scoring the touchdown. Me, personally, I would have scored. I guess you could say I'm greedy, but I felt like Singletary deserved the touchdown run there. 
you would have went up 28 to 15 in the game. You're not going to lose the game uh, at that point. But I think, I guess you'd have a chance to lose it if, if I'm sorry, if, uh, uh, who that we played, if the Browns got the ball back and, uh, I guess you're smart. You go down there, you down, kneel three times, you get a first win. No, no, I guess don't take any chance when you're the Giants because, my God, if any team could find a way to choke away a two-touchdown uh, lead with less than two minutes to go and the team having no timeouts, it'd be us, right? So um, a lot of good for the Giants this week, and they certainly need it, especially with a short week coming up. We played Dallas Thursday night. Um, the one thing you worry about a little bit, you – Saw some missed tackles. That's still there. A lot of penalties still really bothering this team. A lot of penalties uh, really hurting our team. Holding false starts. Um, I thought it was a questionable pass interference call against Deontay Banks. Uh, but it is what it is with those penalties really hurting um, without question. And you just got to clean this stuff up, man. The Giants yeah. needed this victory without question. You know, there was talk. This week about Dable losing the locker room uh, and, and that players are already questioning him. And, well, I don't believe that to be true. There was rumors about Jalen Hyatt wanting to be traded. And, you know, when you start off 0-2, the ta- especially in New York, the tabloids have a field day with you. And they just start making up stuff, even if it isn't true, because you want dissension. Like, oh, there's got to be dissension in that locker room and everything else. You know, maybe there was. I, I questioned Dable the first two weeks. I'm a fan, man. That's, that's my job is to question this, question that. I'm not a player. But I feel like Dable's play calling was very good today. It was very creative, but it was at the same point, it wasn't reckless. Again, a really nice mix. I like seeing those four wide receiver sets. It wasn't even four wide receiver sets. It was four wide with a couple of our running backs out wide. Tyrone Tracy made an impact today. Um, so, again, man, <coughs> excuse me, still under the weather. It feels good to win a freaking football game, but if the Giants are going to beat a team like Dallas, they're really going to have to shore up uh, both sides of the ball. They can't have these penalties. They can't have these turnovers. Deshaun Watson was not good today uh, at all, and Deontay Banks got cooked by Amari Cooper. You definitely want to see Deontay Banks shore it up a little bit. I know Cooper is one of the better receivers in the league. Next week, it don't get any easier. You get a better receiver, one of the best, if not the best, in football in C.D. Lamb. The Giants are going to find a way to beat Dallas. They're certainly going to have to put pressure on Dak Prescott. They're going to have to get some sacks. They're going to have to get some turnovers. And, again, Cleveland has a really good defense. They have a really good defense. Miles Garrett is unbelievable. But you saw Andrew Thomas. Miles Garrett was a good matchup. Thomas did a really good job today. Sometimes Miles Garrett got him. But most of the day, Andrew Thomas got Miles Garrett. The offensive line has been really, really good. Like, it's been a bright spot for the Giants the line has been so much better than it's been the last couple of years. And I feel like that's going to help Daniel Jones. If he believes that he's going to be protected and he can stand in there with confidence, he's going to make more confident throws. Daniel Jones really does have to work on that deep ball, though, man. The deep ball has really hurt him. He's been off with that this year. We saw Malik Neighbors um, have a wide-open touchdown a couple of times. It felt like he had a touchdown getting behind the defense. The third down play where Cleveland brought a blitz. Jones missed Wandale by this much. Wandale catches that. He's probably still running. We just got to if, the, if these passes become more accurate, you see this offense certainly has – it certainly has capability of being a big play offense. It's there. They just have to be more consistent because in the first half, they made these plays and scored three touchdowns. Second half, they were missing by like that much. And that's all it takes in the NFL is to miss by that much. But you have to be – Pretty impressed. Jones in the first half was great, um, to say the least. Second half, you know, he they struggled a little bit offensively. Jones made that bad decision, which this is why I killed Daniel Jones. You're in your own end zone. You're in under pressure. You plant your foot, throw across your body uh, into the middle of the field. It's luckily that two Cleveland defenders bounced off each other. The ball dropped to the ground. You certainly didn't want to give them any confidence there. <laughs> I felt like Kevin Stefanski called a very poor game. Why you go for it on fourth down? I mean, I know we ended up missing the field goal there, but why you go for it on fourth down when your defense has shut the Giants down that whole second half? You're, you know, there's four minutes to go in the game, and you take not only do you go for it, you take a timeout before you go for it, you don't get it. Now, granted, again, we missed the field goal, but it's such a terrible play call. Like, I don't understand that at all. Again, I'm just a fan, man. I, I don't, I'm not a coach, but. You have to question decisions like that. I don't know what they were doing. Like, did they really feel like 
The Giants, it's not like the Giants offense was playing the way they did in the first half. And they went for it earlier in the game. They did get it, but I thought Cleveland's offense, the, the offensive play calling is very aggressive, especially since the offense wasn't very good for Cleveland outside of that one throw on the first play of the game and then that one drive that they had. But they really never had anything going because the Giants defense was incredibly disruptive, constantly getting pressure on Sean Watson, making him roll around in the pocket, making him throw off balance, and he couldn't hit anybody. If he didn't have Amari Cooper, God only knows, and it showed on that fourth down pass. No, Cooper got hurt, couldn't be out there, and the receiver dropped the football. It was a great throw, good coverage by Banks. Everything was right, but the receiver dropped it. We got a break. The Giants don't get many breaks like that. Normally when you're a bad team, the breaks go against you. Today we got a couple breaks that actually went in our favor. Does that mean momentum is changing towards us? I mean, who knows? And we have a short week. We play Dallas on Thursday. I don't ever expect much against Dallas. Dallas recently has just beat the brakes off of us without question. Um, they have been more dominant than any team against us, in my opinion. They beat us on both sides of the line of scrimmage a lot. But our lines of scrimmage are a little bit different. Perhaps this defense is starting to get some confidence. It's the best front seven we've had since Jones has been here going against Dallas. And I think the offensive line is also the best we've had going against Dallas since Daniel Jones has been here. I feel like we should compete with these guys, and all I'm asking for when we play Dallas is to give us a chance to win. Just let's be in the game in the fourth quarter and take our chances instead of getting blown out 40 to nothing, 49 to 17, never being in the game. If we can play with Dallas and have a chance, who knows, right? Anyway, it feels good to freaking win a football game, man. I know a lot of fans go, oh, there goes your quarterback. Oh, the quarterback this guy. I get it, but listen, man, it's September. I'm not about to sit there and say we got a tank. I ain't doing that yet. <laughs> I'm glad to win any game we can win. The Giants don't win a lot. So I'm happy we won the freaking game. So I appreciate you guys because watching the game. If you haven't done so, please like, subscribe, ring the bell. Enjoy the rest of your football Sunday. I'll see you guys tomorrow night. I get to drink scotch. We get to talk about a victory. And I'm looking forward to it. Until then, it's a bad digging dizzle and I'm out. Peace. Hey, man. W video, W bad dog. The Giants won. Let's go. Holy mother me balls.